In this video, I want to share a little note-taking strategy with you. Of course, all the time, I'm sure you guys hear about the importance of taking notes in cybersecurity, in pen testing. And if you haven't, well, here's a, here's the advice here. You want to take solid notes uh, with everything that you do. Uh, in general, I, I find that across disciplines that helps a lot because, I mean, especially if you're going to invest your time into learning something, then you want to make sure that you, that time is worth it, right? If you invest all this time figuring out how to, I don't know, set up a tool, maybe installing Go or something like that and setting up maybe Kerbroot, let's say. You know, let's, let's say it takes you an hour, you're a complete beginner, you end up Googling stuff and it's really difficult. What you don't want to do is then have that experience of, you know, stepping away for, for a month or so and then you set up a new VM and you have to go through that entire process all over again. Instead, what you want to do is have good notes and take notes and document your process, right? And similarly, as you are gaining more experience by doing more CTFs, doing more challenges, and really putting your hands on the keyboard and kind of grinding it out, you want to make that time and experience count. And the way you do that, once again, is taking good notes, documenting that process. So I'm going to kind of walk you through that right now on my personal note-taking strategy. Now, every everyone has their own strategy. Everyone has their own kind of preferences with this, but I'm going to show you mine and you can take it, make it your own, or you could copy it verbatim. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fault you guys for that whatsoever. And the sun is creeping up on me right now, but I just really had to emphasize this point to you guys because I think it's really important. But as you're leveling up, you're eventually going to come to that point where you're going to be looking to get into the field and start interviewing for those jobs. I mean, definitely apply the note-taking strategy uh, so you can gain the most out of your interviews, right? And you can learn and level up in the most efficient way possible there. But you're also going to want to arm yourself from knowledge of, you know, someone who has went through these interviews and had that experience and can tell you with foresight, like these are the most prominent questions you're going to get. And you're going to want to be able to answer this, this, and this, and this is how you answer it. Um, I have that for you guys right down in the description below. So check out absolutely for free, the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to ace it on your next attempt. So definitely check that out and let's get right back into the video. We have the Metasploitable 2 VM to kind of demo this here. I have that set up. And let's see here. I'm actually going to log into it to get the IP address because I'm not sure what it is offhand. Let's just take a look. So we just run an if config. And this thing is 237. Okay, cool. Now, if we imagine that this is a machine that we are going up against, we're going after this one. First thing, I like to use a program called Obsidian. And uh, you can just Google for Obsidian. It's this one right here. And I'm just going to create a note sheet for it. I like to take my notes as I go to document my process. And this is the biggest piece of advice. Whether you use Obsidian or Cherry Tree or whatever your preferred note-taking tool is, we're going to focus on the, the kind of methodology here, really, uh, over specific tools and stuff. It's kind of up to you. This is what I like to use. But the most important part is that you take the notes as you go. You jot down the stuff. Not only will that help you on your pen test be more efficient so that you can make sure you're not duplicating work. But what it'll also allow you to do is when it comes time to write that report, you're gonna have 80 to 90% of the information there for you already. And it's gonna be a very easy process just to write that report. You're just gonna have to fill in the little gaps here and there and polish things. But yeah, it's really not, anytime I've taken a certification or things like that, or even in the real world when I write my reports, it's never been like this dreadful, cumbersome thing because I do this along the way. So that's what I really want to emphasize here. So uh, we'll just write the uh, name of the machine here that we're up against, this is Metasploitable 2. And for our information, maybe we'll have like the IP information, which is 192.168.1.237. And we'll start I like to kind of break it down by category here. So we have recon, initial foothold, things like that. We'll just leave it here at recon. We can have one for nmap. We're going to run that nmap scan, and I probably should have had that going in the background while we're doing this. So let me just go ahead and fire this up, and I'll just go into a throwaway directory like dev shm, and let's run uh, let's run an nmap scan. We'll run our initial scan. On the uh, on the target, 
So SC, SV. We'll run it with the verbose flag. That's fine. We'll save it to a file called, uh, we'll call it initial. This will be our initial nmap scan. We'll run it against the target, 168.1.237. And yeah, we'll just fire that one off. And we see a number of open ports already. So because we ran this with the verbose flag, and this was not intended to be like an nmap video or anything like that, but this allows us to kind of start digging into these open ports. Now, obviously with Metasploitable 2, there are a ton of open ports. Uh, maybe I'll take something like this. I'll copy it. And I could put it here just to reference as we go. And we want to dig into these different open ports. So maybe we prioritize, I don't know, something like uh, SMB. So I could start looking into the ports. So I could say SMB... Which will be TCP four four five, and uh, I can have that there, and I can start putting all the information that I get from SMB down in this section here. Now that's the way I can kind of categorize everything. So if we look at SMB, maybe we run a tool like say Crack Map Exec, and we'll go with um, we'll try like uh, guest access, maybe like anonymous access first, and then guest. And to see if we have any kind of access to that or anything. The whole time we have the scans running in the background. Of course, the point of this video is to understand the note-taking process. So we do get some information from that, right? We have the NetBIOS name is Metasploitable. Domain is just local domain. Um, now, and it looks like we do have anonymous SMB access, which is interesting, right? So we could go from there. Uh, maybe we add in tac, -tac shares to see if there's any shares available. Um, okay, we have read and write on temp. That's very interesting, right? So all this stuff, we can capture that information as we go. This is the way I like to take notes for sure. So I can come here and we can say read and write access to a temp share via null session. And then we can have our output in here. So now what this allows us to do is while we're testing this, we keep adding to this document, keep adding to these notes here. And that way we don't duplicate work. If we forgot uh, what access we had and stuff, we could just scroll through the document. We can see stuff like this. I mean, I could even have this one as like open ports. Of course, we need to run the full scan then afterwards. But yeah, we could just keep adding to this and you know, kind of uncover this at a, at a glance here. We can, we can see what we found so we don't waste our time redoing commands we already ran. So we see this one now completed. We have it saved to a file. So now what we can go ahead and do is run the full scan. So we'll change this to full, do dash p dash. And yeah, let that run. And in the meantime, I'll just grab this information here and... Now I can paste this into the nmap section. So maybe I'll say like scan or something like that. And then I'll have all this information here that I can refer to at any point. And I can just keep doing that for each open port. So, okay, there's anonymous FTP enabled, right? We can, we can do some information on that, but we could also just start looking at the banners and stuff that we've grabbed. So let's see, were we able to grab anything from that? Uh, not that I saw here. We could then try to get more granular with that. So we could do FTP 192.168.1.237. Anonymous, because anonymous FTP should be enabled. And, okay, yeah, we did get a banner. Nmap did not find it for whatever reason, but it's running VSFTP D2.3.4, which I believe is vulnerable to an uh, remote code, unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability. Yeah, backdoor command execution. So as we find that information, we could start documenting that as well. So if we go back to our notes, this is how I would do it if I had multiple different ports that I was looking into. Might come down here and say, uh, 
FTP, which runs on TCP port 21. Anonymous FTP enabled. We can do that and we can kind of back up these claims with the uh, with screenshots, right? This is usually what you have to do when you're writing reports is what you have to do when you are going for certifications and stuff like that. So it's a really good habit to get into. Do it as you go and it won't be too painful. So I could just do something like this and have this here, anonymous FTP enabled. I could just paste the screenshot or I could just put in the code here as I have. And <clears throat> we can also say the FTP server is running the SFTPD 2.3.4, which is vulnerable to an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability. And then we can link that exploit so that we have it at our fingertips. Put that below. And yeah, this is kind of the process I would go through with each and every port. And this is just for this machine, right? If you work on a lot of CTFs, I would do this for every for everything, right? Because uh, it really doesn't take too much extra time to do it and actually helps you be more efficient in your pen testing for all the reasons that I just mentioned. But if you just keep doing this for all the challenges, all the CTFs and stuff that you encounter, eventually you're going to build up a library of information that's going to be really handy. So what you can then do if you have, you put these all in the same directory on your computer and you're using a tool like Obsidian, you know, other tools could probably do this as well. But one thing I really like is I could start then using the search functionality Right, like if you look here, I have a ton of different folders, a ton of uh, machines that I've done as well. So if I go to, for example, uh, I have a hack the box folder in here, and these are a bunch of not all the hack the box machines that I've done, but like all of them that I've done since I've started using this uh, note taking strategy here. So what I could do is I could search through all my stuff. So hey, this is what I actually searched for last. So that's actually a good thing. So. This is an example, right? I was wanting to do some Kerber roasting and I was like, okay, I can't remember the command for uh, doing Kerber roasting using the Impacket tool because it's really finicky, right? Let me just search my notes for when I ran this command last. And I clicked here, boom. Okay, I took some notes on Active Directory and here was a command, the Impacket command that I ran. Cool, let me just reference this. Uh, and then run it for my situation. And uh, I could look at a machine where I ran this. Okay, when I was working on the intelligence box from Hack the Box, I ran this command, and this was the parameters that I used. So as you see here, you start building up this library of information, this library of things that you've done, and that's how you really gain value from your past experiences even more so than you would if you didn't take the notes, right? Because now... Not only am I learning and gaining experience, I'm capturing that experience and I can look back on it and I can use that um, for new stuff, right? So this is what really is going to help you get to that next level. And this is what all of the best hackers do uh, without question. They all take solid notes. They all have their own custom library of information, experience, and notes that they can call upon in any situation. So hopefully this one helps you guys. If you want to get into more technical content, I have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.